Okay, so a lot of you out there might look at this equation and say, this is not that bad. I can solve this uh, equation. And if that's the case, that is fantastic. Go ahead and solve for the variable x. Put your answer into the comment section. But I'm going to tell you right now, most of you out there, 90% plus of you out there watching this video, do not understand this very critical part of solving an equation like this. Even if you get the problem right, you know, uh, most students don't fully understand kind of what's going on. Of course, I'll explain exactly what I'm talking about in just one second. But again, if you could solve this equation, put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the right answer. And then, of course, I'm going to fully explain what's going on to solve an equation like this. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And uh, it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, we want to solve this equation. Of course, I'll tell you what type of equation this is in a second. Uh, we want to solve for x, but I want to give you a full opportunity for you to solve this all on your own. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. So the answer is x is equal to 18. Now, a lot of you uh, very well may have solved this, but you may not have taken uh, the additional critical steps, and you may kind of, you know, you got maybe a little bit lucky here, right? But some of you may not even gotten this answer. No problem. I'm going to explain this thoroughly. But if, in fact, you know exactly what you're doing and you got this right answer, let's give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100%, and multiple stars. You can brag to your friends and family that you are a certified professional expert in solving basic radical equations. And that's what we're talking about here. This symbol in mathematics, this thing right here, uh, a lot of you might say, well, isn't that the square root symbol? Well, yes, it is. But technically, in math, we call this a radical. Okay, So when you're studying uh, algebra and the like, uh, you'll typically find units or chapters like uh, radical equations, radical expressions. So this is what we're talking about. Of course, uh, this symbol here can also be um, uh, you know, viewed as a square root. But if I go like the cube root of 8, this is no longer, this symbol here is no longer a square root. It's the cube root. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. But uh, again, if you got this right, fantastic. If you got this wrong, no problems. Let's go ahead and learn what uh, is going on right now. Okay, so the objective here is to solve for x. Now, we have this radical or the square root. So how do we solve this? Well, you can see I'm taking some steps down here. But let me just go ahead and explain uh, what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is isolate the square root or radical on one side of the equation. And you want to have uh, this term or this expression on one side, and you want to have one number on the other side. So effectively, you have a radical and a number, right? So you're going to have to do whatever algebra you need to do in order to get it down to or get your equation to this uh, um, uh, uh, scenario or this step right here. And then from here, we'll take the next step. Of course, I'll show you that in a second. So right here, we don't have this radical by itself. We have this one-third in front of the radical. No problem. We can uh, clear this one-third away simply by mu multiplying uh, the equation, uh, both sides of the equation, by 3. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see what's going on here. And when I multiply the equation, both sides of the equation, by 3, remember the golden rule of algebra. You could do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do the uh, do it do the same operation to both sides of the equation, right? So three times one third gives me one uh, times the square root of two x or the square root of two x, and that's what I'm looking for. And then I have two times three, which of course is six. Okay, so at this stage, we're ready to take the next step. Now, anytime you think that you know uh, what to do, you should pause the video and. Maybe try to finish the problem out on your own or just kind of take a mental guess. So like, hey, what, what's this guy going to show me next? Well, of course, we'll take the next step right now. But before we do so, I want you to take the next step by hitting that subscribe button. You do not understand 
the positive impact that has on my YouTube channel. Uh, certainly, I appreciate, uh, greatly appreciate if you've already subscribed. But if you are considering subscribe, just don't even think about it. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification button. I am posting math videos, I and mean, I've been doing this for years, pretty much daily. Okay, and I love to cover basic math to advanced math like calculus. So, anyways, back to the problem. All right, so here again, we have the square root isolated on one side of uh, the equation and a number. So how do we uh, uh, kind of get rid of the square root? That's what we need to do, right? Because we're trying to get to this x. So when you have a situation like this in algebra, what you can do is square both sides of the equation, okay? And, and this is exactly the way you want to write it. So, um, you know, the way you write your solution is very important. You don't want to you know, get um, impatient and kind of skip steps. Be like, okay, I just know, I know, I'll just do this mentally and then kind of write the next step right there. No, just take your time and, you know, so you can double check what's going on. So you want to square both sides of the equation right here. Even though you know that this is going to be 36, show the step. Okay, so we're going to uh, do this right now. And when you square a square root, the square root goes away. So the uh, square of the square root of 2x is 2x, okay? And of course, 6 squared is 36, and this is what we have right now. Okay, so pretty simple uh, step remaining. We're down to a one-step equation. We have 2x is equal to 36. So to solve for x, all we have to do to div is divide uh, both sides of the equation by 2, and x is equal to 18. All right, so this is where the real fun starts. Now, a lot of you um, probably got this answer. If you got this answer right, you may have stopped. And so, okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and get my nice little happy face from the YouTube math man. Well, not so quick, okay? This, you're not really done, okay, at this stage, all right? So, you might be saying to yourself, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube math man? I am done. I got the right answer. What are you talking about? Uh, we're not done. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Anytime you are solving radical equations in algebra, okay, you always uh, need to check your solutions, okay? And this is a big, big topic, and this is kind of what I was alluding to in the beginning of this video, is a lot of people don't understand that this is a required step. In other words, x is equal to 18 is a possible solution. It looks pretty good right now. But we have to validate, we have to check every single solution because there's something called extraneous solutions, extraneous solutions or extra solutions that can pop up. And uh, this will, you know, definitely happen in more sophisticated radical equations, right? We're doing something pretty easy right here. But if I gave you an equation, something like this, 2x plus 3 minus maybe the square root of x is equal to 5, you know, something crazy like this, uh, we're basically... I'm going to be following the same general strategy. Of course, this is a lot more uh, work, but these type of equations, these square root or radical equations, can definitely end up with something called an extraneous solution, which is not a real solution. The only way we know whether, in fact, a uh, solution is uh, extraneous or not is we need to check it into the original equation. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we got x is equal to 18 again. This is not an optional step. So if you were in my, let's say, algebra class and you gave me x is equal to 18 and you didn't show me this step here, I would take some points off of your work and then you would be very upset and you're like, I don't like you anymore, Mr. Math teacher. Um, I want to switch teachers, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, let's go ahead and get to this. So x is equal to 18. This is what we think. So what we're going to do is replace this x with 18, and we're going to see how this uh, works out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So replacing this x with 18, we have one-third times the square root of 2 times 18 is equal to 2. All right, so here we go. Uh, we're going to have one-third times 2 times 18, of course, is 36. So one-third times the square root of 36 is equal to 2. Now this is well, an area of great confusion with a lot of algebra students. So let me explain this. And by the way, if you um, are kind of still with me in this uh, video at this point, uh, the big payoff is going to happen right now because I'm going to explain something very important to you. Now, when students check extraneous uh, solutions, I don't think this is made clear enough in most algebra books. I'm talking algebra one, 
Algebra 2, college algebra, pre-calculus, when we're checking for extraneous solutions, uh, you need to only uh, use your, basically, when you plug in and you take the square root of a number like this right here, we're only going to uh, uh, consider the square root of 36 positive 6. In other words, uh, let me be more clear here, the square root of 36, a lot of you might say, well, the answer is both positive and negative 6, right? Because positive 6 times positive 6 is 36, but a negative 6 times negative 6 is also a uh, positive 36, right? Let me just make sure I said this right. Positive 6 times positive 6 is a positive 36. Negative 6 times negative 6, a positive 36. So a lot of you might be saying, well, uh, how do I know what to do here? The square root of 36, shouldn't I just think of this as both positive and negative? The answer is no, okay? When you're taking the square root of a number like this, you're going to be using the principal square root, the principal square root, and uh, a lot of students get confused, uh, understandably so, because I don't think this is uh, really explained well enough in uh, most algebra courses, okay? So you only take the positive version, because if I use the negative version, it's going to get uh, confusing. Well, let me go ahead and show you the rest of this work with the positive version. So the square root of 36, the positive version, of course, is positive 6. That's the principal square root. So we have 1 third times 6, of course, is 2. 2 is equal to 2. This is a true statement, meaning that x is equal to 18 is, in fact, a good solution. But this could be confusing, right? If you're thinking, well, the square root of th uh, 36 is both positive and negative 6. If you put a negative t uh, 6 there... Uh, you're going to end up with a negative 2, and this is not true. So you might say, well, I don't know what to do. Maybe 18 is not the solution. Well, it is because we do not use that negative, okay? That's a whole different discussion. But uh, again, in my, all the decades I've been teaching uh, mathematics, 99% of algebra students you know, don't fully grasp this, okay? Of course, it's my job to kind of, you know, uh, emphasize this. So anytime you run into a radical equation in algebra, you'll know exactly what to do. Okay, so if you need um, more help with radical equations or solving equations or algebra, uh, I'm going to leave my most popular math courses, the links to them, in the description, which uh, would include pre-algebra, algebra 1. Uh, this would be algebra 1, algebra 2 uh, work. But if you happen to be in pre-calculus, I'll leave that link in there as well. I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel that cover this. But uh, anyways, if you understood all of this, wow, that is fantastic. You are certainly well on your way for being a math genius. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.